everyone. Welcome to Working Women. I'm your host, Jace. We have met many amazing women um, while running Creative at Works. So we hope to share some inspiring stories um, about how female executives, entrepreneurs, as well as freelancers from Singapore are actually taking charge, right? And building successful businesses. Today, we are speaking with Kalin Tan. She is the new director of original um, productions and development for Warner Kids Division in Asia Pacific. As a department lead, she is responsible for identifying new IPs as well as producing original series for several networks under Warner's. So yeah, as Jace, thanks Jace. Thanks for having me here. It's really fun to be part of your series. Quite an inspiring series. So I don't, hopefully I can be as inspiring. Uh, but in the last six months, uh, what has been really fun for me was I actually wrapped up a job and started a new job right in the middle of the pandemic. And the new job is with uh, Warner Media Kids APAC, where I'm overseeing original productions and development, mm. uh, which is a really fun role. Uh, what we're doing is we're looking at, we're taking pictures from creators all over Asia, um, as well as developing internally ourselves content that will be fun for the region. Um, where, where our shows are going on are Cartoon Network, um, Boomerang, and specifically to India, a channel called Pogo, where we make very specific Indian, uh, Indian programming that does really, really well for us there. Um, so I think for me, the... I've been doing this for a long time, mm, as you know. Yeah. Um, what's been exciting for the region, besides pandemic, <laughs> um, pandemic aside and jokes aside, um, what's been really interesting for content is a desire and a demand for relevant mm. content, right? Mm. So Asian produced content, Asian storytelling, Asian representation. So I think content creators, both from a general entertainment point for adults as well as for kids, it's going through a little bit of a renaissance, so mm. to speak. Um, and that's what I'm really, really excited about mm. and um, hoping to see that we get to develop and produce some really fun stuff in the next few years. Right. How interesting that you actually mentioned you actually wrap out a previous job and then join this job just before... The pandemic start, right? Uh, yeah. Was that, well, how, I mean, how does the timing work for you? I mean, does that change a lot of your plan in that sense? Or how has the pandemic? I you? think um, I've, been, I've been very fortunate mm. throughout this whole thing, right? Both organizations were very supportive in terms of um, wrapping up on the other side mm. and starting. Uh, but I literally started, wrapped up in my old organization, I actually, I was working from home, from my dining table. Uh, I had to work through HR to wrap mm -hmm. up. And then um, I brought my computer back to the office though. Um, and then for the new job, they sent me my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, I have never even seen <laughs> the inside of WarnerMedia APAC uh, at all. But um, it was, for what I've learned in the pandemic, which, which, I, which I'm seeing more and more of, mm -hmm. is a, uh, a great patience and kindness um, from people. Mm. Uh, I think everyone in the past, everyone was rushing and we were creating stuff and making things happen. We're, we're st we still are. Mm. There is um, there is still a lot of things happening, trying to keep the economy going, trying to tell stories, being inspired. A lot of us, when we stayed at home, were very inspired by all kinds of different stories. Uh, and, but throughout all of this, I do feel a shift in kind mm. of an energy, a very patient and mm. kind energy. And, and that, for me, I think it's the positive takeout mm. from from the pandemic. Mm. Because if not, there are a lot of other things that right. weren't great. Yeah. Right. So given this as a very challenging year, right? So um, how do you actually juggle your different multiple roles, right? Like, um, you know, the role of, you know, leading a team, uh, in a new organizations, you know, um, um, and being a wife and also being a sister, be a daughter. <laughs> I'm very fortunate. So I really can't complain. Um, the most challenging thing for me is that my parents live in Australia. Mm. My sister lives in Australia. So uh, we actually went, we actually flew to Melbourne where my sister is for Chinese New Year. Mm. And that was the last trip I made this year. So we had that really, and I'm very, very grateful for that, right? That time where we where we all got together, celebrate Chinese New Year, 
we all talked about the virus because that was when it was just yeah. happening. And even when we were there, we were also very careful about... Usually, we would go to Chinatown, you mm. know, for Chinese New Year. But we were very careful. We went to the supermarket early in the morning and all of that. Um, but I'm very, very grateful for that time because after that, we didn't go anywhere. So I think that for me was probably the most challenging. But... Um, at home, it's just my husband and me. So mm. I'm super fortunate. We split the house in half. You take that half. I take this <laughs> half. Uh, so I've commandeered the dining table <laughs> and kind of like set up my office there. Yeah. Um, with the team, I'm also really fortunate. So um, with animations particularly, mm. we've always been very used to a remote setup. Yeah. Right, yes. so it's not something that we were un we were not used to. Mm. Uh, our productions already as as before the pandemic would happen, say in Malaysia, uh, and then some parts in Philippines, and then some parts in Ireland, and then some parts in Indonesia. Mm. And, you know, music is done here, scripts is done here, mm. design is done here. So in that part, I think for animation pipeline, it it was a lot easier for us to kind of move into that remote mm. remote kind of working. So I, I really have. For, for me, I've been really fortunate this mm. whole pandemic and how like easing into remote working, easing into um, video calls. Um, I'm just really thankful that's happening in 2020. Yeah. It, just like yeah. even five years ago, we yeah. were the cloud computing was not as powerful as oh, it is yeah. today. No, Wi-Fi so, is not strong yeah, enough. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. So, so I think, yeah, if it's anything, the technology also, I think in the medical front, as, as with the challenges that have, mm. we also have so much advancement from the time that we handled SARS and the mm. time that we're handling COVID as mm. well, right? So, mm. uh, but for me personally, uh, it's been very easy. I don't know, you should ask my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so easy for him because he's a freelance writer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freelance, so yeah. So, 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 so he, how is he competing <laughs> as a freelancer? Yeah. You so know, he's usually at home. So yeah. he writes at home, right? But yeah. I usually go in the office Correct. and then now he's like, oh my god, I have a colleague with me 24-7, yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's quite bossy and she's like, you know, telling me <laughs> to do this for lunch, to do, like, come eat dinner now. Yeah, so so um, I read a report somewhere, right? they say um, during the pandemic, right, you either, you know, grow your bond together, I mean, as for, for husband, well, you either grow your bond, right, or you actually can't split up yeah. because you just realise that y'all cannot stand one another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for us, very fortunate. Like, so for me, it was great. La. He's mm. super easygoing. Yeah, so I think uh, if it's anything, maybe you should have an interview with him <laughs> to find out. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe how, on this episode, <laughs> we should yeah. invite him over. Yeah, and ask him, like, you know, your wife usually is, you know, in the, co in the office. office. So yeah. what is it like to have <laughs> around, yeah. So been in the animation industry for a while now, right? Mm. Uh, we don't disclose how long, la, but it's a good good time, la, right? <laughs> long yeah. enough. It's, it's no secret. It's, <laughs> yeah, I think everyone knows about 20 years. <laughs> Yeah. So actually, you can be considered as one of the pioneers, right? To start the animation industry in Singapore, in, uh, a, in a way. Yeah, I guess. I, <laughs> it would be nice if yeah. people think of me that way. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't only me. La. There's yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of us. That, yeah, we're the that's, first animation yeah, project. That started like, out 20 locally. years ago, yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. So from then till now, right? What do you, do you see any impact, um, you know, that the pandemic will have on the Asia animation landscape? Um, I think... We were really, as I mentioned mm. with animation, I think we were really primed mm. to be able to do remote. Uh, you know, there are studios in in Philippines, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, um, who the the big difference was now we had to make sure our animators were at home mm. and still be able to deliver the work, right? Mm. Um, and like I said, thank goodness it's 2020 because the Wi-Fi mm. access, uh, if not, it would have been more challenging mm. in the past. So I think, and then how animation kind of moves smoothly mm. into into remote um, remote production. What I think is that this will encourage more work mm. to be done in this manner, and we are primed to be mm. able to do it, particularly in Asia. Mm. So I'm really excited to see the next two years mm. for animation um, in in our parts of the world, and hopefully because they have delivered, we have delivered mm. uh, well in the last. Sorry, in the last we've de we delivered in the last six months. Um, that will see a demand for mm. work being done out of here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So in terms of the plan, um, you know, in this whole new normal, um, how do you see your so-called plan like, you know, in the next five to ten years? Um, and 
you know, is there any new opportunity that you think? Oh, yeah. I think the new opportunity for sure in the content space um, Mm. is really telling our own stories. Mm. Right. Uh, We've all lived and we grew up in a world of very um, Hollywood driven Mm. stories. I think in Singapore, we are also very fortunate to have access to Japanese animation, Chinese animation, Indian content. Um, Mm. So we're now in terms of wanting to tell our own stories at a, at a, say, um, a different level. Um, This is the timing. So that's also why I'm very excited, both from the technical capabilities we've proven in the last 20 years, um, we can deliver. Now we are kind of shifting into telling the stories, representing our characters. Um, so, you know, we look at Sailor Moon, she she has an anime look, but it's not particularly Asian as well. Her hair is kind of blonde. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I'm very excited about the new content. And as we were mentioning before this about Gen Z, right? The kind of stories that they want to tell. And also, you know, with your 12-year-old and then we have nieces and nephews who are like six and nine, how they consume content. So we have to kind of think differently. And I think that's the exciting bit. Mm -hmm. How do we show them content that they want to watch? Because if you watch the stuff that they watch on YouTube... It's not mm. like high quality, great animation, but it makes them laugh. It engages them. Uh, and I think so as creators, as storytellers, as artists ourselves, um, it's really thinking about putting our fan and the audience right at the center of what we are creating and thinking about them. Mm. And so the fun bit for me is that we're thinking about a Singaporean kid, the Malaysian mm. kid, the Indonesian kid, um, the Chinese kid, you know, the Sri Lankan kid, the Indian kid. So... That, for me, is the fun bit. Mm. Yeah. And mm. speaking to them, representing them, so that when they watch the cartoon, it's them seeing themselves, seeing mm. their world. Mm. Yeah. So, but you know, we have always been talking, I mean, especially in the content creation space, right? That, um, you know, th- the storytelling part probably is the weakest link. Right? Yeah. I mean, for technology, we are fine. Yeah. We're in fact better. Yeah. Right? And then in, in a lot of things, execution-wise, you know, project management-wise. But the storytelling, I mean, for Singapore content creators, is usually the weakest link. So do you see any improvement in that? Or how do you, what are the key players you think can actually play a difference in this particular? I think we were always challenged because we were always had to tell other people's stories. Mm. Um, But now when we're shifting and we're going to be telling our own stories, Mm. I think that will be an easier hurdle to get across, right? When you're building characters that you know, Mm. when you're building worlds that you know, Mm. or you're building worlds, imaginative, fantastical world, but rooted in your own culture and your own roots, I think that will come stronger. Mm. I think it was always challenging for us because Singaporeans particularly, because we are a mishmash, right? We're kind of a roja of everything. So it's not, we're not really Chinese stories. We're not really telling mm. Chinese stories, you know? Um, like, But if you look at like Thais, they tell beautiful stories. Mm. The Taiwanese tell beautiful stories, right? So it's not that Asians can't tell the stories. I think we just have to tell our own story. Mm. So mm. for me, I think for Singaporeans uh, in particular, it will be... We, we're we're going to have to rise to the occasion mm. to be brave about our own stories, mm. and I think that's one hurdle, right? The the to to develop that bravery to say this is our story and this is how we want to tell mm. it. Um, it, and it will take a bit of time, but I think the time is is now. No. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the opportunity is there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I'm actually quite encouraged to see a lot of the. Um, content creators I mean uh, especially those so-called the YouTubers now starting yeah. to tell different kind of stories yeah. like you yeah. know one of the episodes uh, on Working Women which we just um, did this morning was actually this particular YouTuber so she did a documentary on Grab Driver okay. during CB oh right? wow so I think it's like story like this although there's nothing fancy yep. about story yep. right she just go about interviewing all the Grab Driver but it's something that is the sincere part of it right and yep. the very fact that she is willing to actually share you know why she care about this group of yep. people was just amazing and she's so young I mean it's a young kid right yeah. it's like I think the, the next generation right, yes. are more prepared and more brave like, in a yeah. way right yeah. to, to be more yeah. Honest about who yes. they are. <laughs> I think so. I think um I think in with every generation, I mean Singapore is such a young country. Mm. We're only 55, right? So from our parents to us to our kids, uh, you know, we've only seen maybe in 
these like three main generations, mm. right? Um, in the last 55 years. And in each generation, we get a little bit braver. We get a little bit more confident. Um, so for me, what I want to nurture in the younger mm. story uh, storytellers in Singapore particularly is the creative confidence, mm. right? Um, you know, we came from our school, mm. our, our school system. It's not the most nurturing in that manner. Um, so it's something that, that, as they are 20 year olds right now or like from the 20 to the 35 year olds uh, and they want to tell their stories but they also kind of straddle the the baggage that we mm. had like you know this story is not good enough um, and or we want to be someone else yeah right? correct. we aspire to be someone yeah, else yeah correct exactly so but but I do see them more braver than us mm. and that's something that inspires me mm. and keeps me going at my job right mm. um, both ends right whether it's Older, older folks who never thought about who never thought about media, mm. and are like, I'll try it. I'll, mm. just, you know, I'll do my podcast now. Yeah. You yeah. know, I have a friend whose dad is a YouTuber, right? <laughs> yeah, um, and, the and exercise, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Exercising. or yeah. like you know, reviews on food and yeah. stuff. And he's figuring out what to do um, on on YouTube. Mm. It this inspires me, right? Mm. Because you know what, it, you do, you don't have to be called a a storyteller to tell yeah. stories. Yeah. We everyone inherently wants to tell mm. stories, mm. Uh, and so yeah, it's a it's a great time to and for me at Warner Media Kids, what I want is to be able to to be part of teams to tell these stories that mm. will resonate with kids, with our kids, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you actually have a long, I would say, long and interesting career, <laughs> straddling between you know corporate government, working for yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. You're once upon a time a yeah. freelancer as well. Yes. Right? Yes. So given that you have tried all the different, um, I would say, uh, 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 corporations in that sense, right? Um, which one do you think you you as you would want to go back to one of these days, right? And you learn. Or, or I would say the most rewarding for you in a way. I've been really fortunate mm. in my career. Um, I mean, you you know me and you know that I wasn't an animation train. Mm. And you know, I, I fell into it by um, starting Peach Blossom with a bunch of really great friends, really talented people. Mm. Uh, and we created an animation that Nickelodeon Asia picked up. Singapore first animation, right? If I'm not wrong, animation long form series, yeah. 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 Animation yeah. TV series, Singapore yeah, yeah. first, yeah, locally yeah. produced. Yeah. Um, and the three of us didn't know how to do like none of us. <laughs> one was a math graduate, one's a theatre graduate, one's a, a fine art graduate, right? Like, and we figured out like you know we had to like cobble a team together and figure out how to to produce the animation. Mm. Um, so I kind of really fell into it, and I was just really fortunate with the opportunities and the mentors I had. Mm. Um, and so, like, my current boss is someone who I've known for a long time and throughout the years kind of kept in touch and, you know, um, uh, asked him for advice. Mm. Um, my boss at the government, Michelle, was mm. another one that uh, was very inspiring um, with with their time, their advice. Um, I have one of my... One of the other bosses that mentored me a lot is Richard from... The US mm. uh, when I was with an animation technology company and it's it's kind of it's part part planning mm. um, so I can't really say which is the most rewarding because they kind of it's kind of like like building blocks of adding yeah. one on top of the other and I think if you took one out the rest everything they will kind of mm. crumble right mm. like it, it won't happen that way um, so yeah so people and opportunities were mm. were I couldn't, I couldn't have picked Michelle, Richard, and Leslie, mm. right? Like this, I I knew of them, but there was no way I could like pick them to go and work for them. So the opportunity came to when the opportunity came and rose to to work for them. Um, I was really fortunate to get the job. Also, uh, and each of each of them were very rewarding in itself, uh, and kind of just it was all kind of just mm. building mm. the overall career. So I wouldn't mm. be able to. It would be so like. Pick one out. Yeah. yeah. So which one would you say is the most challenging for you? The most challenging was probably setting up your own studio. <laughs> yeah. I think that because um, we didn't have mentors. Mm. We didn't have it. And then in, in Singapore at that time, there was nobody no. we could go to. 
So we had to go to... No case study yes. to, to, to follow. <laughs> yes. So we had to go to Canada, we had to go to China, we had to go to uh, Philippines um, to kind of look for partners, right. figure this thing out. Um, whereas the rest of them, when I had when I had these bosses who, who mentored me, mm. um, who took the time, um, who shared their experience, I felt wasn't as challenging and it was always... Uh, I knew that I could I could always like reach out to them. Mm. They created environments where I felt very safe to to even if I made a mistake, kind of ask mm. for advice. So I think the most challenging was definitely when we went, Well, well yeah, we can. What's so hard? <laughs> Do la <laughs> And how long have we been doing that? That was it lasted for a couple uh, of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. No, yeah. Peach Blossom Peach Blossom was from two thousand to two thousand well, Peach Blossom still exists as an yeah. entity, right? Mm. Um but Kind of just the the operations of it. I think mm. they wrapped in 2009, 2010, mm. which is about 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, moving from one to another was not easy. Mm-hmm. And especially, you know, in the animation, which in Singapore, we all know, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's, it's a, it's a challenging industry. Yeah. <laughs> Both, you know, from a creative standpoint, technological standpoints, etc. So what would you say are the driving forces and your motivating factors to keep you, you know, moving from one place to another? To, um, yeah, I think it was, a lot of it was opportunity. Mm. They were, I will be very honest, there were times in this industry when I went, and we've had chats about it, right? When I was very like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Continue. Yeah, I think this is way too hard. Um, and I think in everything in life, you will you will have that. I definitely had the high moments, mm. right? When one of the shows were nominated, the shows mm. that I produced was nominated for an international Emmy. That's a mm. high. When everyone in the team and production is chugging along and we're having fun even through the hardest of scenes um that's a high but then you get the lows as well right when for whatever reason you think oh this show is great but it doesn't rate or like Mm. you know nobody wants to buy it and it's just so hard to put a deal together um i think it was always friends Mm. and people um in the in the industry to kind of keep specifically to the industry was was definitely the people mm. uh, in Singapore but when we are so small everyone knows each other um, it can get it it can get really scary at times um, because everyone knows each other but at the same time it's also a very supportive environment mm. um, because it's so small yeah. and we know that you know if we don't help each other then if we don't support each other, then it's very hard for us to go very far because media yeah. and anything it takes a team to yeah. produce. However small it is, it'll, it'll, you know, it takes a few, a, a, a team to get yeah. it done. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and I, we are up against so many different people. Yeah. Right? so many different countries. South Korea, from your South Korea to your yeah. China to yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I've been really fortunate to have really good friends, mm. right? Like yourself mm. and like you know, um, in the industry that keep us sane, keep mm. us going. Good conversation. Over coffee, tea. Uh, Although we, we also complain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we complain, we get it yeah, out, we, get out. Yeah. we have an opportunity yeah. to then and then go, okay, yeah. Lah. Okay. Yeah. It's oh, actually yeah, not so bad. Yeah. Yes, let's not so bad. Let's go work. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So I think that's important too. Yeah. yeah. So just now you mentioned you have the opportunity to meet with a lot of good leaders. So in your point, like, um, in your point of view, right, right, right now, how has the pandemic actually changed the whole, you know, um, leadership um, um, role for you? Like, you know, is there a certain um, characteristic that, you know, all the more the leaders of today, right, need to follow? Um, I, th- I think it's people... Have, have not really changed, right? Mm. Deep, genuine connections mm-hmm. have gotten us further along mm. more than anything else. Trust. Uh, I think trust is super, super important mm. for me, what I've learned. Um, if I can trust my boss and my boss can trust me, um, we can really make a lot of things happen. But when there is just a minuscule of mistrust, mm. it's impossible. Mm. Nothing can get done. Mm. Um, so... This for me is like timeless, right? Yeah. It's it it hasn't changed from the beginning of time till now. Um, it's just that we are a lot more aware. Mm. I feel about the need for that. Mm. Um, so honest, genuine, and that's hard. How mm. how do we communicate honestly? Mm. Um, 
with the team, mm. um, creating that kind of environment where people feel safe to make mistakes, mm. um, where people feel safe to ask questions, um, where people feel inspired to give their best every day. Mm. Um, it's 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 hard when you're in your dining room and they're in their dining room. It's hard also when they're, you know, living in a small apartment mm. with a lot of other people. So that's why I feel like everyone's been a lot kinder and more supportive of each other because everyone has our own challenges which become which has been brought to the forefront mm. by the pandemic. Mm. Um so I think the pandemic has made us better people maybe mm. and um and I hope that's a lesson that we take away that mm. we take care of each other mm. uh, a little bit more and as leaders um we just have to be really aware of that right we also um as much as we need to be aware of that our teams have to be aware of the the stresses and mm. and at the uh, when I joined I was very fortunate to have a team that was very aware of that mm. as well right um like and and so like even Everyone's like, hey, you know, if you have any problems, just call me, uh, text me. And we have so many ways of staying in touch. And then you have to balance, right? To like, don't over communicate. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, don't, um, don't like, you know, for some people, yeah, 11 o'clock is fine. For other people, it's like, no. And so just, just that heightened awareness, mm. yeah, that mm. everybody needs to have of each other. Mm. Yeah. So as leader yourself, right? How do you think women can actually better position ourselves for the leadership role that we will we will, you know, aspire or will bound to take up um, at one point in time? I think I think we have to believe in ourselves. Mm. I think that bravery with content and creativity uh um is is a privilege that we don't have, right? That bravery, uh, it's it's slowly changing, and then it's a fine line, it's a fine line of between arrogance and confidence, also, uh, and, and aggressive too, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. you, you know, we have to strike. We we have to we've learned right mm-hmm. because okay, we 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 find ourselves not confident or like you know no one hears us even though we like hello hello <laughs> hello hello and then like oh yeah she wants to say something uh and i think it's a growing pro- it's a it's a learning process for everybody mm. it's a learning process for 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 the guys it's a learning process for the girls mm. um and it's a it's a human learning process la. but for like like if i was to specifically just talk to women um to believe in ourselves I, mm. I think like you know um, we or guys who don't believe in yourself just just trust yourself a bit more mm. yeah I, mm. and I think that that um, and take a chance on yourself right um, you never know what yeah. when you when it's really fun when you surprise yourself too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I think there's definitely a lot more support, you know, going out to the leaders nowadays, you know, with, you know, um, communication being so open with yeah. a lot, like what you mentioned, a lot of tool that's available to help you to manage your, your teams yeah. and things like that. So with regards to the representation of women in the management level in the local media industry, specifically for Singapore, um, do you see a shift like, you know, there's more women now or actually it's still pretty much male-dominated? For the media industry, yeah, the just locally, right? Yeah, locally. Um, I can speak for for animation. Uh, yeah, I think if we're talking about independent producers, mm. it's, still, it's still a very male-heavy, mm. uh, still very male-heavy. Um, so it would be nice to see, you know, um, a lot more examples like Jean. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but it's and the other thing I also wanted to to and I remind myself right mm. like um, there are some women who who don't want to be in leadership. That's true, right? And mm. it should be okay. Mm. And we, you know, it sh- it shouldn't be it shouldn't be um, expected. Um, so. Yeah, so that's the other thing also, right? To be mm. easy on ourselves. Mm. Like, we also have, like, this unrealistic expectation yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, for me, it's like, wherever you are, like, if you're 20-something and you're trying to aspire to, to in the media industry, is go for it, right? Um, I hope you're as lucky as me as, and the opportunities mm. came about for you to, to, to push yourself. But if it doesn't happen, it's um, really 
going out there to meet all these different people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but do you think that diversity will matter? I think diversity matters. Mm. Diversity matters. And this is a big conversation even mm. at Warner that we're having. Mm. And why diversity matters, it's important for us in Singapore to be very aware is because Diversity is not just gender, it's not just race, it's not just socioeconomic background. Mm. Um, but diversity brings better stories because it's a perspective that you've never heard before. You know, um, the main story, everyone's heard mm. it. What's so original, what's so interesting. Mm. It's really in the in the stories that no one's told that everyone wants to hear, right? That's, that's insightful, that's mm. surprising. Um, and you can only have that mm. if you have a diverse team. Right. Right. So um, and that goes the same for any grouping that you do. Um, you know, if you have a bunch of guys, they will never talk about breastfeeding problems because <laughs> they never had it. Yeah. Right. Um, if Same. If you have a, a bunch of single women mm. together, they would not know about breastfeeding problems or having to put a nursing room mm. in the office, right? Mm. Or the nursing room should be comfortable mm. and not addition next to the toilet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and you can only know this because you have had a, a mom on your team mm. who has to come back to work and breastfeed. And that's something that's fairly simple. So there are many different perspectives that we'll never, never hear if we don't encourage a plethora yeah. of different people in the team. But yeah. does diversity also brings about management, um, I would say, challenges? Yeah, sense, for sure. Know, yeah, for in sure. terms of the diversity. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, always, it's always easier to, to manage homogeneous mm. teams mm. than diverse teams. Um, and I'm not saying that homogeneous teams won't excel, mm. but um, uh, what, in my experience, when you have diverse teams, um, you need a stronger leader to be able to rise uh, above all of that mm. to make the decisions mm. and go, okay, we've heard all the diverse voices. Uh, or, okay, this is a democracy. We've heard everything. But for everyone, this is the best next step forward. Mm. Right? So, um, it's, there are some niche stories that nobody wants to hear. Mm. You know, like clipping toenails in buses. I don't know. <laughs> you know, there might be a group of people who are really interested in that. But then it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, that's not something we want to talk about at this point. Mm. But um, so you definitely need that clarity of mm. vision. Um, and and I've been very fortunate to work with bosses with that kind of clarity of vision. That's why I also know that, okay, that's that's what you will need in a boss, mm. that you have these diverse groups and you have all these different voices, um, but then you have someone who's very clear and this is where we're going to get there, mm. okay? So we're building the car. He goes, we're going to get there and we're building the car, all of this. Okay, and mm. so somebody says, oh no, these kind of wheels will be better because yeah. they have experience with wheels. And then somebody goes, hey, you know, from the place that I come from, um, leather seats are not great. These are better. Mm. Um, and then the but the boss will be the one that says you know what there's no budget for mm. leather seats this will have yeah. to do right and um, and this will get us there so so it is challenging uh, it, it, but I think it will always be better particularly for content mm. yeah mm. yeah that's true I think um, I mean for us we are also seeing a more diverse group of freelancers mm. or you know um, I, I mean particularly women right mm. um, and and although you know a lot of people freelance for different reasons mm -hmm. right but um, in a way to have better control over your time yep. right seems to be something yep. that you know a lot of the women actually appreciate yep. especially if you run multiple roles right yeah yeah. so in a changing media landscape like this right so how do you actually then continue to stay relevant and make yourself you know approachable <laughs> uh, okay so for my job because it's kids content yeah I try and spend a lot of time with kids. Mm. Yeah. So uh, while I don't have any, I'm very fortunate to have access to many from as young as uh, a one-year-old, mm. my godson, to my oldest nephew who is 17. Mm. Um, so yeah. And my friends and cousins, they all know this, right? Mm. When I have like, I'm doing a particular show, I'll like message my, my 17-year-old, I'll just mm. message and like, what game are you playing? Why mm. are you playing this game? Why is this YouTuber interesting? Um, and then I'll, I'll test some toy out mm. with the one-year-old. So that, that helps me stay relevant in them. Mm. Sometimes just hanging out with them and just watching what they watch. Mm. Um, and then with the, with the younger 
younger folks in the team, it's also making time, mm. yeah, to to um to understand things that I don't understand. So mm. I still don't get TikTok, but I go on it <laughs> often to try and understand it. Yeah. 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 Um YouTube, like, it's okay. Because I also think YouTube came out when I was fairly young. So <laughs> that one was kind of easier. Uh, Instagram is now slowly moving to, like, an older <laughs> demographic, yeah. right? So it's kind of making sense to us now. Um, but yeah, so things like that, mm. like Twitch and TikTok, where I'm mm. like, uh, but I, I have 15 minutes where I access something that I'm uncomfortable with mm. that I do not understand and I try to understand that's how I try and do it sure, sure. thank god I like technology yeah. La. yeah yeah yeah. so I mean certainly I think technology has played a very big role mm-hmm. right um, and also especially in terms of disrupting the media industry since yeah. we all know yep. right yeah. um, you know people are switching from I mean from traditional broadcasting to you know streaming online mm-hmm. content and things like that so what do you think um, the future of media is going to look like especially in kids content right so so our kids you know <laughs> this is something watching? that I think about all the time <laughs> like three years from now yeah. will they still be watching you know um, the thing that's interesting for me like uh, my the younger kids in my life right those mm. that are in preschool uh when they watch, they do watch TV, uh, but they also understand on demand. Mm. So if it's showing and they they aren't particularly, you know, they're not like particularly looking for something, mm. they don't mind it mm. running, right, in the background. Uh, or like, you know, if they're eating or like this is something. But they also know specifically on, there are times where they will go, I want to watch this. Mm. I want Netflix or I want YouTube, right? Mm. Um, so... Some of the changes that I think will happen is like how we used to do shows 52 by 11. Mm. I think that might change. Mm. Um, Where we used to think of programming blocks, right? 11 minutes, 24 Mm. minutes kind of thing. I think that might change. I think how episodes run, like Mm. instead of doing like 78 episodes, um, can we do 26 episodes? Mm. And each is actually a different... It becomes a producer's nightmare. Mm. Uh, I'm not so <laughs> as a to 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 manage the production of it mm. could be a little bit scary. But I do think that in terms of consuming content, we see k- even kids they still like to binge, mm. right? Um, they like to still have a story that's being told. But we will have to be kind of test it out as well. And then this whole TikTok thing, I'm still trying to figure out. Like you know, is it just I don't know, user-generated, I'm not really sure. It's fun though. Yeah. It's, I like, I've met very, like I've come across very funny content mm. on it. So that's why I can understand the intrigue of it. But as a content producer, is it a, a platform? Um, I also, what I think and uh, I am very encouraged is to get kids, there was a period of time where kids were very mm. passive and watching. Mm. Um, so now we're seeing kids watching and creating and mm. I think that's fun. Mm. And I think for for me personally, as a as a producer of kids' content, I want the content to incite more curiosity. I want to encourage them to get off the couch and mm. tell me exactly. your story yeah. and, and create your stuff as well, mm. right? So sure, play the game, but um, tell me if you could make the game better mm. or if you could do a different game. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, I think certainly I think we are in the age of creating. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Everyone can yeah, be yeah, a creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's fun for me. Yeah. That's that's yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Kelly, for that's the sharing. Problem, yeah. yeah, I just have one last question sure. before I let you go. <laughs> so what advice or encouragement do you have for aspiring female um content creators, you know, who are interested um to to excel in a management role within the media industry? Um Find a good mentor. Mm. I think that was uh, that was key to for me. So I was very very fortunate, like I mentioned in my career, where I started I started a studio without knowing. Because I honestly, if you ask the three of us if we knew how high it would be, you probably would not do it. I don't know if we would have <laughs> said yes and still did it because we were sleeping in the office and mm. and uh, um, but. In terms of then being in the corporate environment and 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 doing management work, it was for me um, having good mentors mm. that that also guided me, whether they were conscious or not, um, in in their guidance um, to opportunities. Um, and so for me, if you are young, 
Uh, and you know, with LinkedIn, with uh, with so many easy ways to get to know people, um, be brave mm. <laughs> and reach out. And I find most people um, are very, very willing yep. to share and mm. willing to support. So find mm. the right mentor and and um, and yeah, yeah, and and that, get that support that way. Yeah, and and there's nothing to lose, right? I mean, it's like what what is the worst that could happen? They just yeah. say no, yeah. right? But the exactly. best that could happen, they yeah. say yes. <laughs> and that's the other thing also, like learn to take rejection. Like, yeah, that's no, true. No more. <laughs> I had no many times. Yeah. <laughs> I've created many shows. Well, I've created shows that people want. Yeah, more shows that I'm created that people don't want. <laughs> Well, but that's part of the journey as well, right? That's a yes. learning process. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, just get used to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Kalin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, no at all. So thank you for joining us this week. Subscribe to our show, Freelance Creative Exchange, and check out our Freelance Creative Exchange um, podcast. Join our website and our Creative at Words community on Facebook as well as Instagram. So have a wonderful week ahead. I've been Kai. Be kind, stay safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we'll chat soon. Bye everyone. <laughs>